Okay, I think everybody's here. We're going to call this meeting to order. This is the uh, Land Bank Commission meeting, and we'll start with a roll call. Okay. All right, Ms. Durham. Present. Uh, Mr. Hardin. Present. Mr. Hollywood. Present. Mr. Martin. Present. Mr. Mills. Present. Uh, Mr. Moore. Present. Uh, Mr. Osment. Here. And Mr. Warner. Here. And Mr. Zolper. Here. Uh, we got a quorum. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, at this point, uh, has anyone had a chance to review the minutes last meeting? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. We second to Jeremy. Okay. Are there any opposed to that? Okay, the minutes stand approved as written. And so uh, we'll go back to old business and talk about the Federal Home Loan Bank at Dallas. Uh, Jonathan, you're going to give that report? Yeah, I, um, I included just a, a small brochure from the meeting. Uh, a few of y'all were able to attend that. Um, just to save everybody's time, I'll let y'all read that at a separate point. And if you have specific questions, I'll be ha happy to answer them. Um, but outside of that, essentially, he provided uh, several bank representatives and city employees with quite a bit of information on how we can partner with member banks and go after funding uh, through their uh, federal home loan bank in Dallas. Uh, but outside of that, I'll, I'll leave all the specifics. It's, it's all on this brochure that I gave everybody. And if you have specific questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Other than that, we can move on to new business. All right, we'll do um, just, just do, I guess, a little bit of the uh, financial report, if you would. So uh, from professional services, I did spend some money doing title work and things of that nature. So that's gone down a little bit. Uh, land and improvements, obviously, it's still in the same spot, as well as condemnations. Uh, so really the only money we've spent from our budgets is through professional services at this point. I think that Bill may join us here in just a little bit, and he'll have an additional financial report uh, regarding the new budget, which is a work in progress. <clears throat> just, just as a point of information for the commissioners, uh, several visits have been made to various properties around town, and there's two or three that are probably ready to present to you all for your consideration. And we're going to start with 115 North Drake. Jonathan's going to give a report on each of these, and then we can see what you want to do with those. Okay, so the information I'm talking about, it should be the first uh, group of papers in the packet that I gave it, everybody. Uh, it's 115 North Drake. This is a property the owner approached us. Um, he's wanting to make a donation to the land bank. There are just a few things. I put a little piece of paper on the front as far as zoning, the lot size requirements, um, things of that nature. So if you have specific questions regarding any of that, um, I'd be happy to answer it. Um, we looked over, we did a title search. I think there was a few municipal liens from the city um, and we may, you know, there may be some questions of having to demolish the home that's currently on there. Uh, but I'll, I'll let y'all look through the packet. If y'all have specific questions, I'll be happy to answer them. The owner, uh, getting back to this, the owner is actually living in uh, Mississippi. This is a lot that the city's been mowing for, I'd say, a few years now. So... Um, Outside of that, I'll take any questions. All right, so with the lot size currently being at 5,200 square feet, the minimum being 6,500, are we just anticipating being able to buy or hopefully acquire something attaching it in the future? Well, there's, there's multiple ways we can go about it. Uh, that is one option. The other option is rezoning it. Um, Daryl, our city planner, has created a new zoning that allows to, that'll allow us to develop smaller lots. Um, it's not going to be your traditional residential R1, R2, R3. 
Um, I believe it's RIU or something to that effect. So we could either try to acquire lots around this. We could look at rezonings, or I'm sure many of y'all are familiar with uh, the BZA. We could apply for a variance on the lot size requirements. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do to make this usable. Um, we just have to decide which route we want to take. Well, I mean, I, I like the idea, especially if we're going to target some of those properties in that uh, 100 block of North Bridge, being able to purchase some of those on Drake that back up or have them donated that back up to that to kind of allow ingress, egress coming out from underneath the bridge. Because that's kind of a tricky spot whenever you go underneath the bridge anyway. One of the other properties that's on this agenda, um, 120 North Bridge is being sold by the State Land Commissioner. We'll get to that here in a second. But it is behind 115 North Drake. And there are, there, are, um, there are other lots available out there in that area. Um, outside of that, I'll answer any other questions. I have a question on the tax. Oh, let me, excuse me one second, Jeff. Uh, just to answer Jeremy's question a little more thoroughly, there are some lots in play. You're going to hear about a couple today. We'll also give you some more information, and just as a point of information, but nothing's been done definitively about any of these, of course. But so the answer is yes. I think whenever Jonathan that email I sent you, I don't know, it's been a few weeks ago. There were several right there on North Bridge that I, I looked up and kind of did some research on that I felt like this 115 North Drake would kind of fall in hands with those backing up, and because I don't know if any of y'all have ever been down that hundred block of North Bridge, but that's the one that goes actually under the bridge. If anybody's ever gone down there before, it's drive down there and take a look, and you can kind of see why it'd be important to have something on Drake. Yeah, and we, you know, like like you said, there are other lots at play. Um, that's really as far as we can go with that at this point. But um, we wanted to go ahead and present this to y'all because the owner's been waiting on an answer. This he actually filled out the application and submitted it to the land bank. Uh, pretty quickly right after we formed the commission, but I didn't feel like we were in a position to be able to make decisions about donations at that point. So I pushed it off until this until this meeting, but he has been waiting for a while, so I thought we should at least put it on the agenda. So, Jeff. Yeah, on, you have shown here a $500, $550 back taxes owed on this property. Does the um, tax liability come with the property to us, or does it stay with him? Uh, we will be responsible once we be, once we take over ownership. We have to pay all delinquent taxes. So yeah, we will pay a thousand or eleven hundred dollars in delinquent taxes, whatever that number is, um, as well as any cost that would be associated with either demolishing the structure or rehabbing it, things of that nature. Okay. Um, but as far as our municipal liens, we won't. Ha we'll we'll address those liens internally. Um, with Bill and, and other departments internally, so we can work that out. But yeah, we will have to pay the taxes. But once we put it on our books, um, the city of Jonesboro obviously is a, you know, we're exempt, so we won't have to maintain and continue to pay taxes. We just have to pay delinquent. Hey, Jonathan, do you uh, foresee that house needing to be demoed? We've had, I've had, Conflicting reports. Some people say yes. Some people say no. It depends on as a commission as we acquire additional lots in that area I envision now this this is just me forecasting right, but I envision putting together some sort of cohesive plan for that area um, Can that structure be rehabbed? I'm sure it could but would that structure fit within whatever type of strategic plan we put together for that development I don't know. And, and it's also possible, I guess, that if someone's interested in buying it, that they, they would probably make that decision and they would also be privy to the whole plan. That would, you know, I'm just wondering, in the meantime, what kind of liability it is. It's a very good question. It's in. in the meantime, I will find uh, a way to get the windows and the doors. And if we wanted to go that route, we could at least board it up to secure it. I think it would have to be secured. Jessica, you got to comment on liability. I mean, I, I don't know what opinions you've had from who. That would matter to an extent about whether it's structurally sound or not. We could make that decision, um, I, and we could we can look at that as time comes. I, I, it would need to be secured at least, and then I, I would happy to have a conversation with Jonathan about. But if, it coming we, down or if not. we if we do secure it and 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 it's acceptable, this is a question. 
then our liability is probably minimized by the fact that we secured the property, correct? I mean, absolutely. I think we want to do that just for safety in general. Right. Okay. Make a motion to uh, accept the donation at 115 North Drake. Second. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Dennis, are you second? second? Okay. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we'll pursue that. I, I will remind you, and Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know this will now have, need to go on the council agenda. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure if this will be a, a Jessica question or more of a Bill question, but how we proceed forward, I think we're going to put it on city council as a resolution. Um, that way we don't have to do the 30-day three readings at the city council in 30 days. This should just go straight to council as a resolution. And okay. then once they approve that, if they decide to, it'll go right into our inventory. I believe, okay. but I'll, I'll work out all those details, but it should you, you and Jessica can figure that out. And I was remiss, I should make an acknowledgement for Keith being here. Keith, we appreciate you're here. Um, we, we've not had very much of an audience, so we're glad you're here. <laughs> so we're gonna move to the next is item C, 120 North Bridge. This is a state land commissioner property. It's on the post auction list. Jonathan's gonna tell you a little bit about it. Um, again, 120 North Bridge being sold by the State Land Commissioner. One thing to point out, um, when you deal with the State Land Commissioner, they have the ability at a certain point to negotiate the sale of that property. Here, I'll let everybody get to their, their packet before. It should be the second one. Um, It'll have a real estate contract from the State Land Commissioner. It's 0.24 acres or 10,454 square feet on the little tab at the front of the packet. You're looking at the wrong one. I am. Yeah, you're looking at the Oh, I'm looking at G Street, aren't you're I? You're I apologize. On Huntington. Yeah. So tell them what it should be. Uh, it'll say industrial I-1. It's there we go. two acres. There we go. Everybody on the same page? Okay. Okay. So... The Commissioner of State Lands, this is on what's known as their post-auction sales list, which means it's been auctioned off. They've attempted to sell it at their annual auction. It's not sold. Reason being is the city's got several thousand dollars worth of liens filed against it. So if an individual uh, developer wanted to buy this lot, they would be responsible for paying both the, the city's liens as well as the delinquent taxes, where the city is going to get a good deal on this is the state land commissioner is asking nine thousand dollars but as a, again several of that several thousand dollars of that asking price is our city liens and how much of, do we know the exact um if you look on the front part i believe it will say penalty uh fees. Mm. yeah C ct where it says city fees i believe that 8500 give or take is what we have. I know we had to demolish the home and we've been mowing it. Um, that number will vary. And another thing to keep in mind too, interest on these properties are added on a, they told me a daily basis. So y'all are looking at a contract that I printed off on Friday that they sent me for $9,035.82. The longer we wait to sign this, um, if I have to get a new contract, interest is gonna be added. So it's actually gonna be a little bit more um, right now, this contract's good through, I believe, December 9th. It, too, as similar to 115 North Drake, it is also going to have some zoning issues, maybe some lot size issues that we have to take and clean up. Um, but I think the net, um, I did the math here somewhere on my, Man. the net cost to the city would be, I think, around $2,500 after we get the money back from our liens, give or take, through all the fees and everything that they have there and interest and all that good stuff. I, mean, I think that's a no-brainer. We've already invested, like I said, the city of Jonesboro has already invested several thousand dollars into this lot, and the gentleman who owned the property, he's deceased. So we're going to be mowing this lot um, until somebody responsible buys it and mows it themselves so I and mean, basically it's it's us 
playing the site for it and them reimbursing us for the lanes and yeah whatnot. now there there was a, at some point there was a discussion i could fill out what's known as a correction certificate with the county and they would release the liens at the state and then that would lower the the face value of this but what i i didn't want to do is release those liens and then get to the city council and for whatever reason they decide they don't want it at that point we've released our liens and it'll be a challenge then is that what the correction certificates are re referencing in your title report uh yeah so those are those are document well i'm not sure about the final report but a correction certificate those are documents that the county is responsible for filling out uh every year when we certify our liens at the end of the year they send that correction certificate to the state land commissioner and that's how the state land commissioner knows uh to add our liens to the cost of their auction price okay. so that's that certificate adds our lien value to the auction and when I take the when I fill out the correction certificate and ask them to take those away, essentially they would be taking our liens off of the asking price, and it would lower it for us. But then we run the risk of city council denying it and us losing those liens. So it's about nine thousand dollars at the end of the day. It'll be about nine thousand dollars at the end of the day that we write a check for, but then our collections department will get all of our city liens back. Less three percent. Do what? Less three percent. I'm not does sure. The, does the county don't they take three percent out? They haven't said. Um, oh, they oh they haven't. They didn't say. I, I don't really know. This is our first time to do this, so I'm sure we'll learn. Um, but out of all of my discussions that I've had with them, nobody's brought up a three percent fee. So, but either way, like I said, we're, we're not investing additional funds into it. I mean, if the cost to us would be minimal. Jonathan, what I'm showing that if we take the difference between the sale price of 9,000 and our city fees of 8,500, we got about a $445 cost that is net cost, but you were saying it's about 2,000. Yeah, if you look through, yeah, I, I did the liens that came up on the title search um i've not found i've not gone back and looked at you know correction certificates from the county okay so that's why I, i'm leaning more on the the larger side we could do this and it turned out to only cost us what you're saying um but i don't want to sit here and tell y'all 500 dollars and lie to you so i'm i'm erring on the side of my better judgment and, and presenting the larger number okay um but it, it could turn out to be less and I'm assuming if y'all approve it with the larger number in mind that y'all would still be okay with it with the less the smaller number. I make a motion to approve uh, the going forward with 120 um, Bridge Street property. Okay. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that passes. Now we'll move to 1444 West Huntington, item D. Which is where the shooting took place. Jonathan. All right, so this is a, a property in a similar situation. Um, it's being sold by the State Land Commissioner as well. It's on their post auction sales list. Uh, the city has several thousand dollars worth of liens on it. Uh, after doing the math based off of what I found in the title search, um, the net cost to us after paying, after getting all of our money back and all that fun stuff, um, it'll be around eight to nine thousand dollars. This property is commercial. Um, for those of you who are familiar with the area, there is a Dollar General right across the street from this. It's at the intersection of Huntington and G Street. Uh, in between like a tax it's, it's actually a lot off G it's Street it's one lot one lot yeah. off G it's, it's one lot north of yeah there's a south side we go straight down Huntington south side of Huntington 
Isn't it a tax collection office? No, it's a vacant lot adjacent right to that church that's right there. It's, it's and then in between it, the church. It's between the, that's right. It's between the church and a tax or a check cashing business. And the Dollar General or the Dollar Store is right across. The right street. across the street on the side street. Uh, it's a commercial lot. Uh, there are, I, I believe, I sent this email. Um, to everyone, to everyone, my, all my information. But I got with Roger, our uh, our stormwater, our drainage expert for the city. Um, a developer would need to submit some sort of elevation certificate um, and maybe have to build that up a little bit. Um, very similar. If you go over there to that property, the Dollar General. Very similar to what Dollar General had to do right across the street. So um, there could be flooding, water issues on it. If anybody has specific questions, I'll. Uh, Jonathan, John, Dennis, I got him. This title, uh, this limited title search, and that's to be understood. It's a limited title search. I don't know how far they go back, but all you have on on the title, limited title search is quick claim deeds. That's a big red flag that there's some problems with the title and as to who owns this property, who really does own it. And I don't know, it looks like they went back to 68. <clears throat> so they went back further than 30 years. But at some point in time, somebody had a warranty deed to this property. And how it got to all these quick claim deeds going down here I don't know if too many developers will buy this property based upon this kind of title. This would be more to Jessica and you, since y'all are the attorneys in the room here, but could we not do some sort of quiet title action through the court system and get a cleaner title? Well, I'd probably want a full title report on this property if I was going to buy it. I, I have the full, re well, I, I sent the limited because it was only two or three pages, but I have a full, a full report. Um, What's it say as far as? Uh, the beginning ownership, does it say? Uh, I've read four or five of these. I'd be lying if I started saying okay. specifics. It's the, the whole the whole report's probably 40 pages long. Uh, you may want to send that to Jessica. I don't want to have her read any more that she has to. But I mean, I'm happy to look at it. Dennis, if you want us to both get it, and then we can have a conversation about it going forward, I'm happy to do that. Would you be willing, Dennis, to look at it as well? I don't have any problem looking at it. Um, it yeah, just concerns things. me. I absolutely thank you for that. I think that we want to also reemphasize something Jonathan sort of talked about, and that's the this property is in a floodplain, mm -hmm. and it would require um, some land. I, I think some fill. Um, the Dollar General, I think you mentioned, is a good example right across the street. So that's another issue with this. It is a block off of G Street. Um, I mean, a lot off of G Street. I apologize. And so potential uses there would need to be a consideration as well, in my opinion. Well, in the just time, just any other discussion, please. Sure. And, and the fact that it's been for sale for how long and, and hadn't sold it kind of throws up a flag to me as well. I just I'm not sure what kind of application very many people would have with that lot in regards to the commercial aspect of it. Um, or I mean, if it'd be better off rezone if we did, what kind of value it would actually what did it actually bring? I just think it's going to have a hard time selling just due to the fact of all of the liens that the city's applied to it. Um, even if you found somebody who's willing to pay the, the additional and, and deal with all the other title issues, when you add the seven or eight or nine thousand dollars worth of city liens on top of it, um, it's it, it, we're either going to buy it and, and and take advantage of the liens we have against it or we're going to tell the land commissioner that he can negotiate those away. So you can either buy it and take possession of the property and, and determine what goes there, or you're saying essentially that you're okay with him negotiating your liens away, because that's what's going to happen. Why do we have to negotiate the liens away? That's, this is probably more of a Jessica question as well, the attorney side of it, but what you do is you either certify your liens to get the money back, hoping that it sells through the auction process, or you do the other side of it, which is foreclose on the on the lien. Um, in the past, we've never decided to foreclose. So all of our liens, including these, have been certified to the state 
and as part of his authority when he's doing these negotiations, if it doesn't sell, I think, at the first one or two auctions, which this one hasn't, it's within his authority to take whatever asking price he can get for it. So can we turn around and negotiate with him on our purchasing? I'm sure we could. Um, I've tried, but the people that I've spoke with didn't really seem too open to negotiations. Um, it hasn't really reached that point yet, but I'm sure we could try. Well, well based on Dennis's comments and, and the floodplain comments Jonathan made, it may be that we want to send this back for a little bit more uh, investigation before we make any big decisions anyway. Uh, I've, I've got a concern as to what we would do with it. I, mean, I think that's the third issue, right? I mean, it doesn't just do you any good to get a good deal on property if you can't get rid of it. Yeah. Well, it's not a good deal. <laughs> well, and, and if you're going to finance it, if we're going to sell it to the developer, they're going to have to get clarity on that on that title before they can get financing anyway. So yeah, we couldn't even get rid of it even if they wanted it. If we didn't have so, so could I throw this out as a suggestion? I think there's about four things now that have come up. One is the is the title, right? The second is the floodplain. The third is um, usage. usage of it. And then the fourth thing would be maybe we would want to talk to a potential developer or two, see if, what their feeling about it would be, just to give us some. Does that seem fair to everybody? Or any other I agree. comments? I agree. So, I, I, could we table this to the next? Uh, make a motion to table to the next land uh, land bank commission meeting to get a little bit more. So there's a motion on the floor to table this to get a, a little bit more due diligence done. Second, um, yes. Is there a second? Second. Who's the second? I'm sorry. Thank you, Jeff. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So that will be tabled. Is there any additional discussion? All right, thank you for that. Um, my understanding that we do have a couple of other items of business that we want to Jessica is the correct term. Walk on to the agenda. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to walk on to the agenda. 113 North Ridge and. We can do one at a time, James. You want to do one at a time? Yes. Fine. So let's can, can you all tell us about that property? So 113 North Bridge. Well, wait, let me maybe I'm out of order here a little bit. So there's been a motion. We'll need a motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any opposed? Okay. Now, James, I think you've got leeway to explore, to present that. Mm -hmm. So 113 North Bridge is in the same general area as 115 North Drake and 120 North Bridge. This is a lot. The gentleman is, you know, in and out. He, he goes to Mexico throughout the year. Um, he's in and out of Jonesboro. The city mows it and maintains it. And as part of this agreement, uh, the gentleman agreed to sell it for $4,000 in exchange for paying off. Uh, he had 600, I think it was $635 worth of mowing liens up to this point that he hadn't paid. And so he paid those liens. And I agreed that we would put this before the commission to see if y'all guys would be interested in buying this one as well. Um, as I said, he paid the liens off, so I guess the net cost to the city is about $3,400, give or take. Keith, do you have a copy? Okay. Hey, Jonathan, is there any way to pull that up where we can see exactly where 113, what it looks like, or where it falls in regards to 120 and 115? While we're pulling that up, let me just make a suggestion to the commissioners. If you do have a chance to go to the to Bridge Street and go down beside the bridge on either side, starting at the railroad and, and looking back um, back toward, um, help me with the street. Um, Johnson? Johnson, thank you. Uh, it would be good to familiarize yourself with that area. There's several potential properties there that may come before us, and so you might want to just kind of familiarize yourself with the area. Um, these these are the properties that are down on the side of the bridge. There's a narrow street on either side. Um, these are not 
um, residences of any kind. These are open properties. Here, 55200. Yeah, I'm trying 5, to. 55200. Uh, so if you look at the either the screen behind me or on your computer screens in front of you, 113 is parcel number 55200, which I've got my mouse over it. It's the third parcel from Front Street. Mm -hmm. Can you point out the other properties the other to, two, that we dealt with already? 120 North Bridge is parcel number 52200, mm -hmm. which I've got my mouse over it right now. Mm -hmm. And then the other one you approved was 52800, which is the one I have my mouse over. As I said, we're in we're in we're discussing some things with other individuals in this area. Um, these are just the three or four that we had ready to proceed with today. And uh, I wanted to put that information to you. But the one, 113 is 55200. And so explain the agreement. This is a sales contract. Yeah, this, this um, I guess technically if, if we wanted to go that route, we could have just enforced our liens and certified them with the state like we do all the rest. And then he wouldn't have been able to pay his property taxes until he pays his liens off. But he paid them. Um, but he decided he wanted to work with us, and uh, it made it easier on everybody, less paperwork and all that fun stuff. So uh, I agreed to present this offer to y'all, and uh, depending on how y'all vote, we'll go from there. And so he's paid the liens, correct? Yeah, he has, he has paid his liens for this property. They are paid off. The only uh, things that are on the lot right now, there's an old fence and a uh, storm, an old storm cellar from when the, the house used to be there. Um, but the house is gone and essentially it's just a grass lot. What's the lot size of this? The lot size, uh, 50 <coughs> by 140. Um, I have to take my mm. Yeah, it's Yeah, so that's according to the, the county records. It's 7,000 square feet. Um, and again, this is an industrial lot. All of these lots that we've talked about are industrial. So there's going to have to be, especially if you're wanting to use it for some sort of residential purpose, there's going to have to be uh, a rezoning of some sort. Uh, and we're going to work with the planning commission and our planning department to figure all that stuff out administratively. This is, this is the same type of situation as 115 North Drake and 120 North Bridge. It may be useful to mention too that we've discussed um, with this gentleman the price, and this is probably the price that he's going to sell it for, at least at the moment. And when you consider that we're going to more than likely mow it next summer, you know, and kind of have to maintain it. It's eventually if we could, it would just make it easier, I guess, less paperwork to file the liens and everything, but. I'll make a motion that we approve the real estate contract to purchase this property. Is second. there a second, second, James? Is there discussion? I definitely would like it a lot better if it was on the opposite side of bridge and backing up to uh Drake, what I feel like, I feel like those properties, there, there could be something done with them if we were able to, to accumulate five or six or seven of them in a block. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at at that one in particular, you know, and, and John, you might have a better idea of uh, the feelings that the neighboring lots have on that side of the bridge on if there's a possibility to be able to purchase others along with it on that opposite side. Uh, I might can help with that a little bit. There are two owners that would do what you just described and we've identified them and have had trouble getting in touch, but that's underway. So we may be able to bring you some more information as soon as we can find them. You know, one of them is an out of town owner and um, I would say this just as a matter of discussion and, and, and get your opinions about this, but we are setting probably a market here for this little area by making this purchase. 
It is, uh, Ray, I'd love to know your thought on that and Jeremy's thought and, or anyone else for that matter, but we are about to set a price for these lots in a sense. Anybody have any thoughts along those lines? Dr. Warner? Yes, sir. Habitat just recently sold a lot in that area. It was on uh, the east side of Bridge, and the sale price was 2000 Yes. So we're in the range at four, you know, two to four. Um, I, I think anybody who owns property here who thinks that they would bring more money than that, um, it's doubtful in my opinion, but now it's just, just, just me talking. Just to and on the on the county's website, now I know they're probably not 100% accurate, but I think this this was valued at 5000 Now that, that could be off by some. Um, so take that for what it's worth is the county's already appraised it for tax purposes, but I'm not exactly sure how accurate that would be. I, you know, I'm just looking at it. I think any lot is worth four or five thousand dollars anywhere in town almost if you've got a use for it. I'm just trying to figure out every time I've ever tried to piece together properties, there's always been a, a couple that have either don't want to sell or they will, but it's just that it's such an exorbitant price, you can't ever make the deal work. Um, what do you guys see as like these individual lots? Let's just say we couldn't assemble a bigger parcel together. Do you, do you think like Habitat would be interested in these a lot? What do you think? What do you see as a use for these? I don't, but like I said, Habitat sold their lot. There. Right. Um, we just didn't think that was a lot that sustained a billing circumstance. Uh, it could be. Um, I don't know the floodplain area, that area either. So uh, I know on State Street, when we're dealing okay. on there, we, we run into the floodplains and we're having to uh, build up those houses off of Belt Street uh, at an additional cost. The, this area is not going to have any flooding issues. I've already checked with Roger. So we're good to go as far as that's concerned. Will John will he negotiate a little bit lesser price? Do you think, or is this? I think we're we're where we're going there. to be, uh, at least for the this point in time. I think we're to there. Proceed any far, to, I'll say to proceed any farther, um, the, it's we're we're where we're going to be at with this gentleman. It's either take it or leave it. At the tent sold theirs. So. <laughs> You know, I, I would go ahead. I'm sorry. And just keep in mind, like I said, it's he did, you know, as a part of the agreement, pay 600 and something anyway. So the net cost to the city's going to be 34, 3500 dollars. Um, and then, you know, going forward in the future, I, I foresee us having to mow this again next summer. Um, so we'll save a little money there as well. So it, it's not going to quite hit us at 4,000, but. And I don't, I don't want to play the devil's advocate on it. Oh, I think you should. I, think I just keep, I keep hearing, you know, the net cost to the city, and collections is going to be. But I mean, I don't. It's kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Whenever we're turning around and we're purchasing property so that the city can get their liens paid off, and and that's that's what I'm kind of struggling with some of this about, is. Well, in I this, mean, I don't want us to go broke. Buying property just so liens can get well, paid off in the city. A good, good point. I, I talked to Bill a little bit this morning because, as, as we mentioned earlier in the meeting, the, the budget's being formulated now. But he he felt like this was not a, a problem or for the money. Uh, I think the question is kind of more of what Ray mentioned. You know, if we can put some things together here, um, this property becomes very valuable to us. If we can't, then we may have to have a developer do something on this single lot and may have to sell it for less than we paid for it, which is the land bank is that's we're capable of doing that. That's what we're sort of here to do. So I, I think we probably won't be hurt with this. I think if we did it a lot, uh, no pun intended, um, that would be a mistake, but I think as a getting our feet wet, I'm not so sure that this is for sale. There is a contract made for it, um, so we we can I think we can approve this if you if you so desire. I think the deal is is done. It's just a question of what your feeling is about it. 
You know, the only other thing I'm thinking is if, if, and I'm I'm just trying to get my arms around it. If our motivation, to some degree, is to to take it, I know it's got to be a good deal, but to take it because we're maintaining it anyway. Um, I'm just I'm trying to figure out um, That's, if we're if we've got strict enough penalties on people that the fines aren't high enough, you know, if we're having to maintain it, it's putting us in a position where we're better off to take it back than to keep maintaining it. I, you yeah. know, I, to do it quicker. I, I'll make a comment, I guess, just as part of the discussion. I don't think that's the reason we should do this. I think that the reason we should do this is we've got some potential. Uh, Jeremy, I think you said this, or Bray, you did, but if you look at this map, this fits into this either side of this bridge. And if we could piece it together, this becomes a very important part. You know, and I guess I could devil advocate the other way around is that if we were successful in acquiring these other pieces, but we let this one go, we're equally bad off. So it's it's just going to be a question, I think, of can we put something together or not? And then, so that's that. But I, I, I agree with you. I don't see the motivation for doing anything with these properties to deal with lanes the city made. I think Jonathan's point, Jonathan, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his point was that this gentleman is told there are liens on the property. He took it upon himself to pay the liens and then put the property up for sale and was willing to uh, sell it for this price. It's a little bit more than the price that Jeff mentioned that Habitat dealt with, but it's also um, you know, somebody else earlier made the comment that this is not a lot of money for any lot in town. No, it is not. It's, I mean, that's nothing for an actual buildable lot as far as that price goes. But I mean, in regards to habitat, I mean, y'all selling yours for two thousand was that originally donated, or did y'all purchase it for? I mean, so I mean, it, was it did a donated property, and it, it is uh, what it we is. We didn't have plans for building on that in the near future, uh, and we were just spending time mowing it. So it's we were kind of like the city. Yeah. So it's not like you. I mean, Habitat lost any money. They could have sold it for a thousand dollars and still been fine with it. So I don't think we can really sure. base our price on what Habitat does. No, no not at all. Well, I can also see if you if you got ten assembled around there and you had four four to five thousand dollars total total in them, if you went to a developer and they were going to build affordable housing and you let you sold them to them for what you had in them, you didn't make a dollar, but that neighborhood could flip over. It could really be beneficial. I mean, down the road, if we couldn't put together a, a big parcel, you, that might be an end game. Is you sell in whatever 10 lots down there so I, I think I, I agree I was just trying to get my arms around the home. Let, let me ask another question to, to anyone who feels like they can answer this so one of the current concerns I had and I, I'll just tell you it was an interesting experience for Jonathan and I to go down there and stand under this bridge for a few minutes we got to meet quite a few people <laughs> leave it at that and um, the train came by once and so I guess my question is, as a developer or someone who's interested in, in making this property viable, is the train, how does that fit in your thought process? Yeah, I, I can tell you this, if you have to build under the HUD home program, uh, there's a noise abatement problem because it's going to be too close to that railroad tracks and it's going to cause uh, you to put some pretty expensive windows and other things to abate noise. I think it probably more fit in with that downtown corridor that they're looking too. at connecting ASU to yeah. downtown more than it would any type of. Uh, and and I look, Jeff, I looked at it another way, which is kind of maybe crazy, but I thought it added interest to the property. I could see somebody seeing, you know, watching the goings and comings of the trains and whatnot. And of course, I grew up on a Mississippi coast town where you couldn't get away from the train no matter where you lived. It the track ran right through the middle of the town. So unless you're trying to sleep, because those trains yeah, go yeah. all the time. I'm not really, I'm not really um, an expert in the HUD business or Jura for that matter. But uh, when we had these discussions, I, I went over and talked to Jura, and um, was asking them about, you know, if we were successful and we were able to get some sort of housing project put on that lot, um, how the noise would impact it. Jura told me that they don't do. That they said that the railroad tracks wouldn't be a problem. Well, um, they said that they've got multiple houses right now by railroad tracks that they're funding. Um, what would happen is we'd have to find a developer who'd be willing to build there. And then after the structures are developed, 
Jura would move in and they would find comparable uh, units that are in the area that and then they would set a price at what they'd be willing to, to subsidize. And uh, I asked them specifically about the railroad tracks and they said they don't have a noise issue. They don't they don't consider that when they're looking at their units. I don't, so again, I'm not an expert in it. I'm just on our, on thank our thanks for that program we had going on at State Street. We had to take a decibel study to to justify the noise levels. And uh, because of being so many feet from the uh, state highway and the railroad tracks. Okay. Um, so that that is a factor, at least weighs in the. Um, uh, the weighs in depending on what you're going to do with the property, correct? Yeah. Okay. Is there further discussion about this property? Yeah, you already made a motion. I think there's a motion on the floor. And there's a second one. Call for and then we had a second too, didn't we? Yes, Am I remember yeah, we that correct? James was, James was the second. Okay. So any further discussion? So we'll vote on this. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Who's opposed? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. So that passes. I'd like to make a motion to walk on 827 Warner Street. There's a motion to walk on another property, 827 Warner. This is at the corner, I believe, of Warner and Vine. Uh, is I'll there a second. second? Second from Dennis. Okay. So we'll put this on the agenda. Jonathan, do you want to, James or Jonathan, one want to present this? Jonathan. Uh, 827, um, we've not had, um, I don't have an agreement in place. I don't have anything for y'all to, to pull it up here. While Jonathan's pulling it up, I'll give you a little background. Um, a couple of us have actually been to this property. It's an open house. Not boarded up. It has nails in the floor and various things. We actually met with a contractor, not in any official capacity, but just to get an opinion. It has, as they say in the contractor business, good bones. It's a two bedroom uh, living room, kitchen, dining room, uh, house on a 60 by 50 lot. It's in a residential area. The present time, it's a bit of an eyesore. It's probably a, a, a safety issue as well, and it is for sale. And um, we have contacted the owner and told him that we might be interested at, at once we had a discussion with the commission. And if if you so desire, uh, we can pursue this. I think what we want from you all is opinions and discussion and approval to, to go ahead and talk to this owner somewhat. Here's the house right here on your screen and I'm up behind me. So there are a couple of issues going into it that I want to point out. Um, that way we're all clear before we before we bite off more than we can chew here. This um, this lot is obviously you can tell it's uh, it's a little smaller. So we would want to, we would have to go through a, either the variance process, the BZA, build back in the same footprint. Those develop, developers who are familiar with this, there's a way. If, to, if, if you raise the house. Yeah, if you had to get rid of the house, uh, we would love to be able to salvage it. So um, there's a few options that we can go to address the lot size, but I'm, I just wanted to go ahead and address that because I'm sure it was going to come up. Um, I'll answer any other questions people have. Have y'all spoken to the owner? We have, yes. I mean, it, I haven't approached Oh, yeah, we've talked to him, but not any negotiation at all. We just want to know, is it for sale and what kind of uh, situation? His asking price initially was 15000 He told us over the phone, I believe, if I'm correct, that he has an offer for ten. Take that for what it's worth. I don't know. But... Um, this house would be uh, an easy victory, I think, for this neighborhood if we could buy it correctly, price-wise, have someone purchase it from us, renovate it, um, put it back on the market. That that was kind of our feeling about it. I, I didn't think that we want to get in the business of demolishing the house and then trying to rezone the lot 
because it's not buildable <laughs> without a variance. Uh, the foundation appears to be good, the trusses and whatnot. It's an old house. The trusses and the studs and all are not uniform. They're from uh, probably, I, I bet the 40s, 50s, right in there. Did you say the current floor plan was a three bed or two bed? Two bedroom, if I remember, Jonathan is, or James, do y'all remember? Two bedroom. Yeah, it's, it's two bedroom with a, a, a living room, um, a kitchen slash dining room area. Yeah. And, and a bathroom. Yeah, as I, say, I saw at least one bathroom, but I didn't go to the other bedrooms. So I don't know, at least one. Down in here. Okay. So it's a, okay. Well, I think um, if we could just have some discussion and see what everyone thinks um, about this property, that would be helpful. I'm going to try to set up a meeting later this week to where I can speak face to face with the owner, um, depending on how y'all guys proceed and what feedback I, I get from this meeting we will kind of determine how we go. But I'm going to try to meet with the owner this week. Did the did you actually go inside the? Oh, oh yeah. Did um, the contractor? Give I encourage you. I encourage you to do the same thing. Uh, he did not. He did say though that he would. It was doable, and that he would be very interested if he could buy the property for a good price. So you know, to me, this is a as all the properties we presented today, this might be the easiest victory if we can buy this property for the correct price. It's simple, it's easy, it's not an eviction or anything. It's a house that's obviously a detriment to the neighborhood and a safety hazard for the neighborhood and it can be turned into a home. Um, the only thing the land bank would be out is our purchase price and what we don't recover if we sell it to a, to a contractor. Just just a thought, you know. I mean, I'm gonna make a motion we try to purchase the property. Second. Uh, there's a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, is there discussion? I would love to hear some people's opinions about the value. Um, maybe if you can't do it now, maybe drive by, take a peek, see what everybody thinks. Um, any of, what other questions or discussion are, are there about this property? Well, I, I see that the appraised value appears to be $8,000, which is a rough improvement seller. Right. No. Improvements are twenty one six. Land was eight. Improvements twenty one six. Twenty nine six. Yeah. But it's in a poor state of repair. You know, I would I would bet you if I own this house, if I were the owner, my idea is what's the lot worth? I'd bet he sees no value at all in the house. Mm -hmm. Be my guess. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I don't think it hurts to negotiate it. No, no, no. See what happens. Okay. Well, it, it really, our purpose for bringing it on the agenda was to get your your gut feeling about whether we should proceed at all with it. So it sounds like that's. Like I said, I'm going to meet with him later this week, and hopefully, we can work something out. Um, I'll have some, hopefully something at the next meeting for y'all to to approve or or talk about. Because he is really interested in selling it. It's something that he was uh, given. Father passed away, and it was kind of just given to him. So he's having to take on the responsibility of maintaining the house and mowing the grass and everything. And he really is not interested in doing any of that. So, so there is a motion on the floor to pursue this house. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any further business to become uh, coming before the commission today? Jessica, you have anything? I don't. Okay. Anybody else? So I'm going to move into public comment. Our only public is Keith. Keith, you want to say something to us? We're glad to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Motion to adjourn. Motion okay. to adjourn. There's no second needed. Anybody opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, everyone.